welcome to a brand new video. My name is Jade and I help people reclaim back their power physically, mentally and spiritually. Now today I'm going to be talking about how to remember your past lives and five signs of your past lives. So the first one is irrational fears. So a lot of the time people can be born with certain phobias that don't necessarily make sense to the life and experiences that they have had in this present time. So this can be certain phobias that you have basically had as a child that were very random, that came out of nowhere. So for example, a child being extremely scared of water because they may have had a past life where they drowned. <laughs> so these fears are normally linked to past life traumas or at times even deaths. So. Another example could be someone who's very scared of fire, who's very scared of a certain animal <laughs> because they actually got attacked or killed by that certain thing in a past life. This at times can also turn into a weird sort of obsession as well. So sometimes someone who was burnt at the stake, <laughs> you know, burnt alive, can also have a kind of strange obsession and fascination with fire because it's kind of like a trauma bond, kind of like what you get with people. Um, at times this can also appear as physical things on your body so you can also have physical scars you can like have birthmarks um, an example is if you were shot in a certain area of your body you may have been born with the scar of like where the bullet <laughs> went through your body um, there's so many examples you can think of sometimes even eczema people say is linked to fire so being burnt in a past life as well so if you have certain birthmarks or scars, um, that again can also be a strong sign of what happened to you in a past life. Number two is music taste. So if you are, like for me, for example, as a kid, I was very obsessed with Native American music from a very young age um, and also Egyptian music. So for me, I've always been really drawn to that sort of music. Um, and whenever I would listen to it, it would just make my soul come alive, like my heart would feel it. Um, and it almost give me a very homesicky sort of feeling, like I would yearn to be in that time era. Um, like no other music can really touch me and make me feel as passionate and alive as sort of Native American and Egyptian music can. And I have a very broad taste of music, <laughs> but those two sort of types of music for me um, make me feel a very certain you know way and this is because music can will trigger your subconscious memories so even sometimes people will be obsessed with music from the 50s um, and that's most likely because they actually lived in that time era so for them it makes it gives them so much joy because their subconscious will remember that music so it kind of triggers you and then makes you feel those emotions that you would have felt in your past life um, when you would listen to that music, when you would dance to it, sometimes even play certain instruments. Um, so there's many different types of music that can trigger certain memories. So if you have a very strong passion or love for a certain type of music that doesn't really match um, with this timeline that you're living in presently, then that's a surefire sign that you are alive in that time era and you are listening and dancing to that music and that's why it fills you with so much joy and passion and like really connects to your soul <laughs> because your soul was linked to that time so with your subconscious brain your subconscious will remember every single lifetime that you have had because it's connected to your soul and also to your blood so there will be many different types of memories and things that can get triggered, especially by something like music, because the frequencies are very powerful in each type of music. So it's a very quick way to trigger you <laughs> to remember certain things. Another thing that people will normally have um, that can bleed through from your past lives is natural talents and skills um, normally that present themselves when you're a child. So if you're born like very talented <laughs> um, with a certain thing, like say with me, I was always uh, very good at drawing. Um, it's probably because you mastered that thing in a different lifetime. So sometimes, you know, loads of people can be born with all different types of talents and they're just very good at it, like from a very young age. 
um, without being taught by anyone, without like reading about it, without being like even exposed to it much. It's because their soul remembers. So it's very innate, it's very natural, and it's because it's a part of them. Because things from your past lives will bleed through into this lifetime. And we just don't remember because every time you have a new life, you get like amnesia. <laughs> Otherwise, it would just be too cluttered and chaotic um, because you need to forget your past lives. But certain things can trigger you and remind you and give you clues as to who you were, what you experienced um, and talents and natural skills are also a very big sign of like what you might have done. Some people can be even just very wise. That means that you're a very old soul because you would have gone through a lot of lessons. So this is why some children can come across as very mature <laughs> um, compared to other children who are just, you know, very childlike. That's because they've lived many lives. Another sign that you're an old soul and have had many different lives because we have new souls and old souls. So an old soul means that they've literally lived many different lifetimes on Earth and also on other planets or other dimensions as other beings. And a new soul will be someone who hasn't had many lives. So they could literally be directly from source or they could actually just have come from other planets and dimensions. So they may not have actually had a life as human. A very common trait with old souls will be that they're very multifaceted, which means that they'll have many different likes and they'll be interested in many different things. And this can cause them quite a lot of problems when trying to choose a career or, you know, a passion or a hobby because they'll be interested in so many different things. And this is because they would have done so many things in their different lifetimes. So again, it's all connected and it kind of bleeds through. And this is why they have to kind of like really focus on what they need to do and like in this present moment, in this present life. Otherwise it can get very chaotic and quite confusing. That leads me to number four, and that's feeling homesick and also feeling like you don't really belong. So this is more connected to people who are old souls or star seeds. So basically people who have had lifetimes on different planets and also in different dimensions completely because within this matrix that we live in there's not just this realm that we have there will be many different layers of different dimensions and your soul could have had lifetimes in those different dimensions as well so if you're someone that has always felt very different, you know, very alien, <laughs> very um, unhuman, like you don't fit in, you're normally an empath, so you get, you know, very drained, you find Earth, you know, quite awful <laughs> to live in, then it's a strong sign that you have lived many other lives in higher frequency planets, higher frequency dimensions where there isn't so much doom and gloom and evil sort of energy lurking around. So it's very difficult for you to deal with being an earthling, being here at this time. Um, or sometimes you can be very homesick for even a time era that you think you've never experienced. So some people will have such strong connections to like Victorian times or ancient Egyptian times or Roman times or whatever it is. They'll feel a really strong bond to that time era and it will feel really upsetting to them. Sometimes they'll get extremely homesick and yearn to be in that timeline again. And that's a strong sign that they had to quite a happy life at that time. So even um, ancient China, like there's so many different timelines that you could have experienced from all different races, all different um, even genders, etc. So this is why some people can be so obsessed <laughs> with certain timelines and they don't really know why. It's because that's the time that they lived in, but most likely they had a very positive life. Finally, number five is having actual memories and visions and dreams of different lives, of different time periods, etc. So there's been so many documentaries of actual children who remember their past lives. And this can sometimes happen, it's kind of like a glitch <laughs> that isn't really supposed to happen. Um, but normally before the age of seven, some children will have very strong memories of who exactly they used to be. Um, and I've seen certain times where the child will know their name, they'll know who they were with, what they done, where they lived. Um, I remember this little boy, he actually took his mom to the place, the house that he lived in, and there was absolutely no way that he could have known <laughs> this place, who he was, and everything he said was spot on. 
He even knew his name. He knew how he died. So he used to be a man that lived in this certain house years ago. Um, I think it was in England. And there was another time with these twins who got reincarnated, who were actually um, twins who had died, who'd been killed, who got run over by a car with the same family. So they actually reincarnated into the same family. And they remembers their death and they remembers their toys that they would play with, etc. So this is how I know um, that reincarnation is 100% true because there's literally been solid evidence um, proving it. So <laughs> there's been so many stories of children who just knew things, even adults who regained memories. Um, there was a woman who remembers who she was in ancient Egypt and she actually found tombs that were buried which again there was no way she could have known like where these places were she always remembered a secret garden um and she actually found it with archaeologists um so there's been many examples of that um but even with normal people like if you have a reoccurring dream sometimes even a nightmare it can be linked to a trauma that you might have gone through in a past life um Sometimes, like even with myself, I've had so many dreams of being multiple different people, um, of being a, a child. Sometimes I've had dreams of being a man. Um, and this will normally be memories because, again, your subconscious remembers these things and it's all locked in. So your brain is literally like a computer. You go in and out of different consciousness um, levels that you had in these different time periods. So it's all there and this is what people mean when they say time is an illusion because technically it is because you can literally travel backwards and forwards into the future and into the past inside your own brain connecting to all these different lifetimes. Another very good way of finding out who you were in a past life is going to someone who just who does past life regression therapy. So basically is when someone gets you in a very deep hypnosis, a very deep hypnotic state and then they are able to guide you and then you can actually remember and then you speak who you were in a past life and then you remember all these different time areas and lives that you had as this person. A very good person who used to do this is Dolores Cannon. I highly recommend checking out her work. Um, I myself have had um, the hypnosis technique that she taught many people done. Um, and for me, many lives <laughs> came out. Um, some were quite negative, some were quite positive. And um, it's yeah, extremely fascinating because the, the only positive thing um, of trying to figure out who you were in a past life is it can be extremely healing. Because sometimes we can die with unfinished business, we can die and have a lot of trauma stored in our soul. Um, and this is something that Dolores Cannon, you know, figured out along with many other people who are in this field is we carry it on into our next lifetime. So if you went through an extremely emotional, traumatic thing in a past life, it can still affect you in this lifetime. And this is also called karma, like karmic debts. So you keep manifesting these same patterns, these same traumas that you actually went through in that lifetime. So. Once it comes to the surface, it can be extremely healing because then you get closure and then you can finally let it go because you cannot heal what isn't revealed. So if something is very troubling, is if something is troubling your soul, um, you really, really need to face it and acknowledge it and then finally you can heal it and then let it go. So this is why it's so powerful to find someone who is a very good <laughs> past regression therapist as well. So I highly recommend going to someone who does the Dolores Cannon technique, which is called QHHT, so Quantum Healing Hypnosis Technique. Um, and it can be very, very powerful. So if you guys had any past life regression experiences, please let me know down in the comments below. Um, if you are interested in my past life experiences, then let me know and I will do a video especially on that. Otherwise, this one will be way too long. <laughs> so I hope you enjoyed this video. Please like and subscribe. And don't forget to click the notification bell. Otherwise, you won't be notified when I get new videos up. Um, if you are interested in my services, I do Oracle card readings. So please check out the link in the description box below. I also offer a third eye detox ebook completely for free. Go to my website, thegoddesscoven.net for more information and to read testimonials as well. So until next time, guys, lots of love, lots of light. Ahimsa. <laughs>